Now I'll be the first to admit that there are some photo editing techniques that are pretty advanced and you know, you think you need to do it on your desktop. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how with a little bit of creativity, we can do some focus stacking and do a full on photo edit workflow using Lightroom and Photoshop on the iPad. I think a lot of people are still a bit skeptical, even though Adobe has been going gangbusters with adding more powerful features and improvements to Lightroom and Photoshop on the iPad and the iPhone. So let me show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. All right, so here I have Lightroom on my iPad open and you can see I've got two images in this album. They're both raw files. And what I wanna do is I want to focus stack them. And I'll show you what I mean. In this photo, if I zoom in, you can see that the foreground is nice and sharp, right? But if we go to the background, because I was using like a wide angle lens and I had the focus point really like right down here, it's just simply the fact that even with a closed down aperture, I just lose focus in the background. That's just the way it is. Fortunately, I had the foresight to take another photo where I focused on the mountain in the background. Now, if I zoom in, you can kind of see that it doesn't even look that sharp. In fact, you can see this aliasing along the edges. And there's a reason for that. With this image here, if you look on the top right, there is a cloud icon. And next to the cloud icon, there is a check mark in a green circle. If I tap on this, you can see that there are two primary modes of storage of the photo. Local is what you have on your actual device. And you can see that on the device, I downloaded the original raw file. And in the cloud, I have the original raw file always there backed up as well. Now, let me go to the next image, the one where the background is in focus. And you can see that we have the cloud icon, except it's in a white circle. If I tap on that, you can see that for local, instead of having an original, we have a smart preview. We have the original in the cloud and you can see that we have an option to download the original file. So I'm gonna tap on that. And depending on the size of the raw file and of course your internet speed, this uh, time can vary. So in most cases for me, it's anywhere from like 10 to 15 seconds. And so there you go, it downloaded the file. And now you can see that local shows as original and that uh, check mark is now green. And if I zoom in, we don't have that aliasing. You can see all of the detail over here. So that's really cool. And that's an important point that I wanna make. If you're gonna do this kind of power editing, especially like focus stacking, you wanna make sure that on your local device, you download the original files. Uh, so that way you have the full sensor data and you have all of that resolution. All right, so now I have these two files and what I'm gonna do first is edit just one of them. And you can see if I double tap a few times, here I can toggle through some of the EXIF information and this was taken with a Sony A7R Mark III and the 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8 lens. And if I tap again, I'll bring up my histogram, which is what I want for this image. So for this image, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into optics and I'm gonna enable lens correction. And you can see it does a really nice job of removing that barrel distortion and hardware vignette. And then I'm gonna to go to geometry and I'm gonna enable this upright switch. And what that does is it'll automatically adjust and rotate the image so that the horizon line is straight. All right, with that done, I can go ahead and start editing. There is definitely a color cast to this photo. It was taken around sunrise. So um, I, you can keep it here if you want for style, but I prefer to get rid of it. So I'm gonna to go to color and then apply a custom white balance by tapping on this dropper. Now, Again, this is a raw file, so I have the full uh, white balance information from the camera, and so I'm just gonna balance around there, and you can see just what a difference that makes in getting rid of that blue cast. So I'm happy with this. But now I want to adjust the tone, so I'm gonna go to light over here, and the first thing I'm gonna do is adjust the white point. And the way that I like to work with adjusting the white and black point as well as the highlights and shadows is I wanna see a mask view. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is with one finger, I'm gonna start dragging on the white slider, and then I'm gonna tap and hold with my other finger. And you can see this mask view, and anything that's highlighted in uh, reds and yellows and whites, that's showing blown out highlights. And so I wanna bring that white point down a little bit. I'm not gonna go all the way, because that's just gonna make the whites a little bit too gray, but somewhere around here, and then I'm gonna, gonna complement that with the highlight slider. I'm gonna bring that down too. And all I'm doing is, again, with one finger on the slider, uh, and then the other finger just kind of on the screen, I get this view. 
And so somewhere right around there, it's okay to have some blown out highlights. Like as long as it's not just completely out there, it's okay if just a little bit of your highlights are blown out. Same thing with your shadows. If you're clipping shadows, as long as it's not a ton, you'll be okay. Speaking of shadows, I'm going to go ahead and open those up a little bit. I don't think I'm actually clipping any shadows. Yeah, like I'm not clipping anything, but I do want to open up the shadows just a little bit. Next, I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of an S curve here because I love S curves. So somewhere right around there for the highlights, bring down the shadows and let's make those mid tones pop a little bit. Then I'm also going to add a little bit of, of gray to the black point. Because I, I, I think this is a bit too contrasty. So something like this looks kind of cool. And I can close that out. And we're almost done. I will go ahead to effects over here and add a little bit of clarity and a little bit of texture to the photo. And then to finish things off, I'm going to go to detail here. I'm going to zoom into an area that's supposed to be sharp. And just like with the white and black slider, I'm going to start dragging on the sharpening slider and then uh, tap and hold with my other finger. And that's going to convert the image to a grayscale view. Uh, and so it gives me a kind of a better idea of how much sharpening is being applied. And then I'll pinch out to see the whole image. And then same thing, start dragging with the masking slider, tap and hold with my other finger, which gives me a mask view. And it allows me to control exactly where sharpening is applied. I generally want it to apply to the outlines of these high contrast edges. And so that's really it that I want to edit for this photo. It's a beautiful scene as it is. So I just kind of wanted to adjust the white balance because that, that color cast was bothering me and then just fix the tone and color. So actually speaking of color, what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of a vibrance boost as well. What I won't do is apply any sort of a vignette, which is under effect. I'm not going to touch that at this point. Okay, now you see we have our image that focuses on the foreground. It's fully processed and ready to go. We have the other image here that focuses on the background. This is the unedited photo. Now, you would think, let's just go ahead and copy the settings from the first photo to the second photo and you'd be right. But there is something you need to do first, especially if you apply lens correction and geometry correction. If you copy settings from one photo to the other, those two options don't seem to copy over. So the first thing you'll want to do is go to this second photo and then just like before, go to optics and enable lens correction and then go to geometry and enable upright. Now with those two things done, we can go back to the grid view. I can tap and hold on the first image, then tap on copy on the bottom. And then I'll tap on the second image and tap paste and then tap apply to commit that. Now we have the edits uh, applied to this secondary photo. You'll want to tap on done to get out of the select mode. And if we tap on the original photo and the edited photo, you can see like if you look at the background with the mountains, how they get sharp. And so like that's, that's pretty awesome, right? Like there's some really powerful editing tools that you can do in Lightroom. And we only just covered a small fraction of the possibilities. And so before we jump into the next section, which is focus stacking with Photoshop on the iPad. I just want to take a few seconds to tell you about my new course called Lightroom Everywhere. So if you're into this, if you're like wanting to get the most out of Lightroom's cloud-based ecosystem, you know, whether that's Lightroom on the desktop, on the iPhone and the iPad, I want you to check out my course. The link is in the description below. It covers absolutely everything about Lightroom in the cloud. There, I don't think there's even a single course like it out there. And just about every video you find on YouTube focuses on Lightroom Classic. But because I use Lightroom with my own workflow, my own photos, uh, I know pretty much everything there is to know about it. And I want to share that with you. So again, the link is in the description below. Your purchase directly supports my small business and it helps me continue to make these videos for you. So thank you so much for that support. All right, let's go back to the iPad. So now what I want to do is basically combine the foreground of this photo with the background of this photo. And this is effectively focus stacking. Now, yes, I know that um, there are more complex ways to do focus stacking, especially if you're working with more than two images. But for these kinds of landscape photos, especially where you have some important details in the foreground, and then you've got a background that is kind of far away, all you really need is two photos. Like it works really well. So when you're out in the field, just think about that. Like what is the subject in the foreground and how far is the background? And can you get away with just two photos? 
So if we look at the photo just really quickly, what I wanna do is go back to the uh, metadata over here. So you can see that it was taken at F14, both photos here, and that gives me enough of a plane of focus in each photo where when I mask them together, I'm gonna get a really nice sharp photo through and through. So the first thing we need to do is actually export these photos out from Lightroom. To do that, just like we did when we wanted to copy the settings, I'm gonna long press on this photo, and then I'm gonna tap on the other photo. So now both of the images are selected, and then I'm gonna tap on share on the bottom here. Now here's what's really important. You see that there's save copy to device, and to the right of that there is kind of a preferences button. You're gonna to wanna to tap on that first, and here is where you can control the type of file that you'll export. So because I'm working in Photoshop and I wanna have the maximum kind of image data, I am selecting TIFF at the largest available dimension, so that's basically full res, and I'm going at 16 bits without any compression. You can also go to more options here uh, to control what information is in the metadata, so if you don't want the location information, you can deselect that. I will go ahead here and enable uh, screen sharpening at a standard amount, so that's typically what I do whenever I export photos. So now I'll go back over here, I'm gonna tap on the check mark on the top right, and now I can tap on save copy to device. And now if I switch over to the camera roll or the photos app, you can see these are the two images that I exported. If I swipe up, you can see that there is the TIFF file at the full resolution. And you can see that it's, they're pretty big files. They're about 250 plus megabytes each. So you'll probably want to delete these from your camera roll or from your device after you're done processing them. And now we're ready to open these into Photoshop. So what I'm gonna do is swipe up here and load Photoshop. And then I'm gonna tap on the bottom left here on import and open, and I'm gonna select photos. And I'll just tap on the first image here. And that's going to create a new Photoshop document that will have that image as its own layer. And so you can see here, if we zoom in, this is the background focused image. Because if we zoom to the foreground, you can see that it's not exactly very sharp. So to help us identify which layer is which, I'm gonna double tap on the layer zero under the layer properties panel on the right, and then I'm gonna type background, and then tap rename. So now we know that this layer is the background layer, and I wanna add the other layer to this document. So what I'm gonna do is tap on the plus icon on the right toolbar in the middle, and then tap on photos again, and I'll tap on the second image here. Now I don't wanna do anything in, as far as transforming yet, so I'm just gonna tap on done on the top right. And just like before, let's double tap on the layer properties and we'll call this foreground and tap rename. And again, on this layer, you can see if we zoom in, the background is out of focus. So now what we want to do is we wanna combine these two layers, right? Like the background on one layer is in focus and in the other layer, the foreground is in focus. So if we combine them, we've effectively focus stacked and we're gonna have a sharp image through and through. So let me show you how to do that. All right, so now we're ready to focus stack or combine the layers. But if you think about it, when you are focus stacking with Photoshop on the desktop, what's one of the first things you have to do? You'll select the layers and then you'll go to edit and auto align. You wanna make sure that all the layers are kind of aligned together when you combine them together. So there is no auto align on Photoshop, but I'll show you how you can align the layers pretty easily. With the top layer selected, you'll wanna to go to the blend mode down here, tap down and scroll to the difference blend mode. Now what difference is showing us is it's basically showing you how the two layers are aligning together. And so what you'll wanna do is move the top layer so that it is aligned with the bottom layer. And so what we'll do is we'll tap over here and then we're gonna move until the images are for the most part aligned. And you'll know that they're aligned because anything that's misaligned in difference mode will have this kind of psychedelic color. But as we kind of put them together, they'll be almost black. You should see a very small amount of that psychedelic color. So you, it doesn't have to be perfect in this situation. You could also use the transform mode to uh, adjust the scale, but I don't wanna do that here. This is totally fine for my needs. And the most important thing now is to go back to the blend mode and go back to normal. Now what we need to do is actually combine these two layers together. And the easiest way to do that is with a layer mask. So what I'm gonna do is tap on the layer mask icon on the right toolbar here. And now you can see that the foreground layer has a mask. And then to combine these two layers together, I'm gonna to use the gradient tool. 
Now, you might not see the gradient tool at first. Uh, if you tap over here, you might see the paint bucket as your default tool. To get to gradient, just tap and hold and select gradient. And before you add your gradient to the mask, you wanna make sure that your foreground color over here in the bottom left is set to black and your background color is white. Now what you can do is zoom in and I'm gonna to try to find an area where there's the transition from in focus to out of focus in the foreground. So I think it's somewhere right around this middle area. And so what I'll do is I'm gonna drag down just a little bit and I wanna make sure that it's as straight as possible because if you drag uh, at an angle, your gradient will be at that angle. So you want it to be pretty much as horizontal as possible. To, to get that, you wanna have a straight up and down line. And so that looks good. And you can see here that because we align the two layers first, everything matches. And here's the best part now. So if I zoom out and then kind of zoom into the foreground, you can see everything is nice and sharp here. And then over here in the background, it's all nice and sharp. And so now we have a nice focus stacked image. The, the details are sharp in the foreground all the way through the background. And so the last step now is to get the image back into Lightroom. You might think that to do that, you will wanna tap on that blue share button, but actually you'll wanna tap on the icon to the right of it, which is the export button. Then we're gonna tap on publish and export. And this is up to you. If you want to retain the layers and you just want a standard Photoshop file, go ahead and tap that. Of course you have these other options, the PNG, JPEG, and TIFF. I'm gonna keep the PSD option selected for now and tap on export. And then I'm gonna tap on Lightroom from the app list over here. And then when you get this dialog box, just tap on launch Lightroom now. And now what I wanna do is add that photo to this album. So to do that, I'm gonna show my album view here. I'm gonna back out, scroll to the top, and tap on imports. You'll see there is the Photoshop file up here. I'm gonna tap on it. And to add it to the album with the two source photos, I'll tap on the very top right here, then select organize, add to, and I'll navigate to where that album is, which was under projects, then videos, then iPad focus stack and add. Now, one thing I wanna show you is that if you tap on this cloud icon, you can see that it's uploading the image and it's a pretty big image. If I tap on the info view, you can see that it's almost 650 megabytes. Now I'm gonna to go to that album that I just added that photo to. So that was under projects, videos, and then iPad focus stack. And now you can see all three images. And now if I want, I can tap on this Photoshop file and I go ahead and add a vignette because remember I didn't add that to the original photos. So I'm gonna just tap on effects over here and now I can add a nice vignette to draw focus towards the center of the frame. But that's not it because again, Lightroom is a cloud-based app. And so check this out. If I go to Lightroom on my desktop, you can see there is the original two files plus the PSD file where we did our focus stacking on the iPad. You can see if I go to the edit module here and go down, we applied that vignette. There are the vignette settings and I can go ahead and do other edits. And it just, to me, this is one of the coolest things because everything syncs between devices. And so that's why I am so excited about what Adobe is doing with Lightroom's cloud-based ecosystem. Again, you can do all of these power edits on an iPad or an iPhone. You can send them to Photoshop and do even more editing. The best part is it's all available in the cloud. Again, if you wanna learn everything there is to know about using Lightroom everywhere, please click on the link in the description below to learn more about my course. I've got this video here if you wanna learn even more about how to use Lightroom on the iPad. And again, if you found this video helpful, a thumbs up is always appreciated, as is subscribing and clicking on the bell icon. Thanks a lot, everyone.